Hello, my name's Genevieve, and I'm going to read you a story. Today I'm going to read you The Boy Who Loved Words by Roni Schotter and Giselle Potter. And here's the first page. And this is the, yeah, the title page, it's called. And this says, For Richard and Jesse, Wondrous Wordsmiths, slash Merry Muses, RS. And then, for Pia, Collecting and Saying New Words Every Day, GP. That's Giselle Potter, the illustrator. Or the, the designer, I should say. It says pictures by. There are, in this world, people who are born collectors. Some collect shells or stones. Others, feathers. Some have been known to collect tiny teaspoons. Such a one was Selig. He was a collector of words. Selig loved everything about words, the sound of them in his ears, tintabulating, the taste of them on his tongue, tantalizing, the thought of them when they percolated in his brain, stirring, and most especially the feel of them when they moved to his heart, mum. That's one of my favorite words. Whenever Selig heard a word he liked, he'd shout it out loud, jot it down on a slip of paper, then stuff it into his pockets to save. Such a collector. Selig's pockets positively brimmed with words. He stuffed new ones inside his shirt, down his socks, up his sleeves, and under his hat. And as you can see, he's walking and the words are just flying out because <laughs> they're so overstuffed. While other children busied themselves with bats, nets, and all manner of balls, Selig played on the outskirts, always on the periphery, listening and collecting delicious words. See, they're all playing and he's under the tree. Up there. And then, he looks happy. His father, a practical man who sold sturdy shoes for a living, wondered what good could possibly come from a son with such a strange predilection. His mother, a large, lovely woman from the old country, worried, could her beautiful boy find happiness? Waving her arms in the air, she was a whirlwind of worry. As time went on, people began calling Selig C- by a new name, Wordsworth. Hey, Wordsworth, kids would giggle. Here's a word for your collection, oddball. Oddball, Selig repeated. The silly sounding word should have made him giggle, but instead made him feel lonely. One night, Selig had a dream. Alone, in front of an unusual emporium, he encountered an oversized amphora. Curious, Selig gave it a tap. Swoosh! Out popped a swarthy, swirling man. Jin! Selig exclaimed. Then, genie! He shouted, enjoying the tang of tasty new words. What you want? The genie asked. A fish? Such strange and savory sounds, such an offer. At a loss for words, Selig suddenly knew his wish, for it, it was for an answer. Is it true? Am I really an oddball? Oddball, you are Wordsworth, a lover of words. Already you have what people search their whole life for, an enthusiasm, a passion. But you need now is a purpose, a mission. And then without a word of warning, the genie disappeared. Selig awakened from his dream, lickety split. He packed a rucksack with a pillow, blanket, apples, honey, cream, soda, and his entire collection of words. He knew exactly what he had to do. Selig 
took to the road determined to find his purpose. That's fun. They, um, that is really fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. On the trail of his purpose, Selig's senses sharpened. He noted the nod and toddle of tulips in the wind, the sway and swagger of tree branches. Now at evening, the light dimmed to announce the arrival of twilight and stars. Dusk, Selig noted, adding that short and enchanting word to his collection. But in time, Selig's step grew heavy. Under the weight of so many words, it was harder and harder to move. He was shuffling and shambling when he might have been rambling and ambling. Perhaps what he needed to do was lighten his load. But how? Throw words away? Waste them? Impossible. They were far too precious. Selig was too tired to think. His exhausted brain could imagine but one thing. Slumber. A splendid word. Sadly, he was too sleepily to write it down. In front of Celix stood a large and lovely tree. He removed his jacket, stuff like his mama's strudel with words. Tenderly, he hung each word on its own separate branch as if putting it to bed for the night. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? You're doing a good job. This is a long one. Thank you for sitting still. With a sip of cream soda and a nibble of honeyed apple, Selig clamored then curled up in the crook of a tree. Snug, he thought, and fell directly to sleep. Comfortably cradled there, he dreamed of his mama, his mission, and macaroons, his favorite cookie. During the night, a pacing poet, unable to sleep for want of word, found himself under the same tree gazing hopelessly at the moon. Night after night, he'd been struggling to find the right words to describe it. Suddenly, mysteriously, a swirling wind blew up. Four of Celie's words sailed off their branches. Reaching skyward, the distracted poet caught them. Describing the word macaroon, he held tightly to lozenge, lemon, and licorice. The moon, he wrote in his notebook, growing more and more excited with each word, melted like a lemon lozenge in the licorice sky. My stars, the poet shouted. Exclusion. That's it. The following morning, Celia awoke to what could only be called a rhapsody of birds and words. The poet was reading his newest poem aloud, a poem chock-a-block with Selig's work. Wiping the sleep crumbs from his eyes, Selig scrambled down the tree and saluted the poet. Excuse me. <laughs> Your poem, he told him, contains some of my favorite words. How beautifully you use them. <gasps> Why, thank you. For once the words just seemed to come to me. Upon my word, how lucky I am. What may I ask is your name? I should like to dedicate my poem to you. For a moment, Selig hesitated. Then suddenly, for the first time ever, he proudly proclaimed, They call me Wordsworth. It was then that Selig realized his mission. It was spreading the word, sharing his words with others. From that day forth, Selig's steps were light and filled with purpose. Ever the collector, he added new words as it pleased him. But now, whenever he felt word heavy, he discovered the ideal places to sprinkle, disperse, and broadcast them. In that way, a baker whose pastries had always been ignored found his shop filled with a mob of hungry customers. When the baker's back was turned, Selig 
on a macaroon break had tossed some of his favorite words in the air. Crispy, crunchy, crispy and crunchy landed next to the crumpets. Scrumptious fell against a loaf of pumpernickel. Luscious leaned against a layer cake. Upon my word, how lucky I am, the baker exclaimed. Then he turned back and saw his voracious new customers. Neighbors realized they were bickering when the words fuss, hubbub, and jibber-jabber rained down on them and stopped their fighting. So they watched them grow still and gaze kindly upon one another. Uh, he cast hush, harmony, and chum in their direction. And so, by word of mouth, the legend began. It's words worth people would whisper. When suddenly the right word occurred to him, he is near, they would nod knowingly. Upon my word, how lucky we are. So this says, adore. This says, adore. You can see those two people in love. And this is wisdom. Because I'm smart. This says, masterpiece. And this says, apologies. These are very important words. Years passed. Selig was a man now, also a myth. But while he delighted in his work, he found that once again, he was lonely. Solo, he sighed. One day after launching the words limber, spry, and gusto towards an aging, unhappy man, Selig heard a sound on the breeze. A single, pulsing, marvelous note floated through the air and found its way straight to his heart. <gasps> Mellifluous, he exclaimed. Oh. Pursuing that perfect note, Sally found a young woman seated by a lake playing a lute. Suddenly, his heart was a flutter. Tremendously, he asked, may, may I have a word with you? What's your name? They call me Melody. They call me Melody, the woman sang out. The music of her voice combined with the charm of her words was to Selig, the sweetest of all songs. It was love at first listen. Together they journeyed back to Selig's hometown to his mother and father. What a reunion. How his mother smiled when she saw them. Worried that they looked thin, she cooked Celie's favorite foods, brisket, dumplings, plum, plum crumble, strudel, and of course, macaroons. To comfort their tired feet, Celie's father cobbled the couple his sturdiest shoes. Rested and Restored, Seely resumed his life's work, joyfully gathering and scattering words on the wind. Since then, word by word, legions of lucky people have discovered and delighted in them. You too may find yourself lucky if one day, while you were thinking or writing or simply speaking, the perfect word just seems to come to you. If so, you'll know that Seely is near. Now, on special days, if you feel like humming or suddenly bursting into song, you'll know that Melody is with him. Upon my word, <laughs> upon my word, you may say. How lucky I am. The end. So that's the inside. It tells you about the words they used. And this is the back. And this is one of those magic books that when you open it all the way, if I was to read it this way, instead of show you the pictures, it's a whole big picture, so it keeps it interesting. Um, yeah, this is a great book. One of the things I really liked about it is when they got to the part with the genie, they spelled things differently, so I would read them differently. Like instead of the word word spelled W-O-R-D, it was spelled V-O-R-D, so I said word instead of word, which kind of made it more fun. So anyways, so today I read to you just right now, The Boy Who Loved Words by Roni Schroeder and Giselle Potter. Um, 
Thanks for listening. My name is Genevieve and yeah, thanks again. Remember, be good to yourself. Be good to your grown-ups. Be good for your grown-ups. Be good to yourself and for yourself. Also, most importantly, be excellent to each other. Thank you. Bye.